Okay guys, I'm now joined by Dave Calder. Dave, how's life treating you? Yeah, not bad mate, not bad. It's treating me better now, I've got my warm coat on. I was going to say, it's freezing outside. It's awful mate, it's not my kind of weather this. Yeah, neither is it for me. But we are here for the boxing, Gavin going in against Kamal on Saturday night. Yeah. Massive fight for both of them. How are you seeing it unfolding? I think it's a fantastic fight. Um, both kids do what they do very, very well. You know, we know, we know Yafai can punch. He's a very, very, you know, very, very spiteful puncher. But we also know he can box. He's come through the Team GB setup. You know, he's got, he's got a lovely jab. Um, he's got a good boxing brain. Um, and you know, he'll be looking to, he'll looking to mix both them sort of aspects of his game up. Gavin can box, and although Gavin may not be. The, a destructive sort of puncher. It's harder than what you think, and um, he can fight. You know, he's very, very gritty. He can fight, and um, it's just a fight that's gonna. I think it's gonna blend really, really well between both fighters' styles, and we're gonna be in for a cracker. This could steal the show. I think it will steal the show. Yeah, I do. I think it will steal the show. Uh, I just hope um, people are sat watching it rather than the bars because this is a fantastic fight. If you wasn't involved in the fight as a trainer in any capacity. How much, how much would you like to just endorse the fight as a spectacle oh, for fans? Yeah, well, yeah, without a doubt, this is you know, this is what it's this is what it's all about. You know, you want to see, you want to see two guys that, that want it and and contrasting. I like seeing the contrast in where one's been bred for stardom, Team GB, being the elite of the amateurs, being set up away from the others. You know, they're they're the ones. Um, then turn professional under you know a big promoter being built up, and then the other guy who's had to do it the hard way, you know, no amateurs come through learning on the job. It's had competitive fights at every level: area, English, British, European, world. Um, and you know, Gavin knows that that he gets beat. He's not getting brought back. He's not getting you know in a couple of couple of easy fights and then before another test this is his this is his one last shot um, it's either small or boxing or retire uh, whereas with Gamal I think Gamal gets beat his brother's a world champion he'll be brought back you know obviously Gav, that's how that's how Gav got another chance really Gav, you know Gav's brother's a world champion he's been brought back put up a good good account for himself against Vargas who's a very very good world champion um, but these kind of contrasts are good to see because you see it in the ring, you see how it unfolds and you see you know, you see who wants it more, you see if the national ability can overcome the guy that's had it hard and, and comes through all the way. Um, but yeah, it's uh, this is what boxing is. Um, that added pressure for Gavin, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but added pressure for Gavin. Could I work in his favour on the night? Yeah, Gav, listen, the pressure's fine for Gavin. There's no, there's, the pressure's on Yafai because Gav's not expected to win. Gav's not, you know, Gav's not the, the superstar in waiting. Um, Gav's the one that's, you know, it's same with, he's always been underdog in all the way through his fights, so it's not something that's that's new to him. Um, so it, it won't affect him. The only thing that he'll probably do is it just gives him that bit of bit more drive than a normal fight would. You come away with a victory. Yeah. Is it the, the goal that got in the second half of the year? Uh, we will see in Gavin in another world title fight. Is that how important this fight is? That's, that's the aim. That's always the aim. You know, every fight is a world title eliminator, so to say. You know, because if you get beat, you back down at the bottom of the queue. Um, that's the aim. But believe me, we're not looking at anything past this. This is everything. This is everything to get with um, We know just how hard a fight is. You know, so when when there's fights like that, you can't really take your eye off the ball. Uh, we've also just had Anthony Fowler announce that he's been fighting with Dillian White on the yes. Has Anthony been ticking over in the gym? Yeah, he's had a he's had a operation on his hands, so he's been out for a long time. Uh, not been able to punch for a long time, but he's back now. Last last couple of weeks, he's been back punching, uh, just back sparring. Um, so yeah, he's you know he's, he's not going to be anything fantastic for, for March 24th. It's about getting him back out there, um, and then I believe we're going to have a step up April 21st. What are you hoping for for Anthony this year? Do you think uh, a British title fight at the end of the year? Is that I'm not. Listen, I'm I'm not looking at rushing him. You know, 
He's a different sort of style to your Cordinias and your, and your, your Olympians like that, that are more based on the skill and, and um, fluid rhythm of boxing. Um, Fowler's a fighter that was getting cut in every fight in, in WSP, um, taking shots for fun, um, trying, to, trying to put a little bit more um, more awareness about what's coming back because we're little little uh, ten ounce grand gloves on. I don't care how good your chin is, you can't be taking ammo every fight. And so we're seeing a little bit of progression in these fights where he still gets it. He's not quite getting it as much. He's thinking about things a little bit more. But you can't have him thinking too much because then it's gonna overcomplicate things for him. Uh, his natural style is to go in there, let his hands go and, 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 and try and use his strength and physicality a bit like a Carl Frotch. That's where the comparisons are because a lot of you know you, you try and uh, come away from that sort of style, but naturally that's what he is, he's a fighter. So you've got to put a little bit of smarts in with a fighter. You know, there are fighters out there that have won world titles by being a pure fighter, but a little bit of smarts in there as well. Um, as long as he implements those sort of things, then you know he's got the potential to, to develop really well. Um, I'm not putting no time frame on us for British titles this year or whatever. I, I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. There's no injuries. Let's see that he's, he's progressing all right, and let's see as the steps go on how he how he develops. For any of the amateurs, you just mentioned Joe Cuddy and mm -hmm. also first doing Josh Boatzi Lawrence again with it. We might turn over. Is that added expectation yeah. that they will just get catapulted into yeah. stardom? Yeah. So how do you guys manage that and make sure they know? Well, like I said, that's so that's um, that's great for certain styles. For styles where, like I said, um, you look at Fowler's amateur fights, it takes a lot, a lot of shots. I don't care what you say in amateurs, over three, five rounds, you can get away with that. Over 12 rounds you're against elite level fighters, you cannot get away with that. You, know? you have to have. Not everybody's as tough as a fox. Fowler's, it could well be, but what I'm saying is, you can't bank your career on being as tough as a fox and just walk through everything and take shots, uh, take two or three shots in order to land one. Because ultimately, you're going to find someone that can take that shot, and you're just going to keep on walking. You're chasing all night long, and you, you know you're getting beat. Um, so you have to add things to your game, and you know that's what that's what he's working on. He's working on very very hard, um, but ultimately it takes time. You know, and like I said, you're not taking away from him. He's not going to be a he's not going to be a Jordan Gill. Um, you know, he's not going to be that kind of fighter. He's just going to have to put a little bit of brains in there. Do you know what I mean? He's still going to look there, look at go out there looking to bomb and get rid of fighters, but he needs to have a little bit of a little bit of intelligence there as well. We just touched on Jordan. How impressed people were you with his performance? Yeah, very. Do you know what? For a kid that's gone from six rounds to ten rounds, just boxing journeymen and guys that are giving it a go, to a guy that's in there 100% believing they're going to beat her, it's a big step up over ten rounds. It's a big step up. And I thought for nine rounds, it was fantastic. He, and one thing I will say is my worry for him before the fight was that he was going to try too hard. Yeah, because he's in the spotlight. It's the first time that he fights. Um, he's, he's the... Um, you know, he's a name act on a, on a Sky show. Um, so I knew he was going to try to hard because that's what he wants. And he was like, well, I've got, to, I've got to impress Eddie, I've got to impress Sky. If I don't impress Sky and the fans and Eddie, then I'm back on small shows and I'm not going to get another chance. So, he, you know, he was going to try to hard. So there's that, there's that added tension in there. But for nine rounds, he boxed really, really well. Round 10, a bit inexperienced caught up on him, he lost his shape, started lifting up and trying to gunsling with him at the same time while he was tired um, and made a lot of mistakes. But what it did do is we all want to see these prospects, are, have they, you know, when, they, when you give them a gut check, do they pass it? Uh, have they got the, the guts? Have they got the, the grit? Can they ride? rough patches out. I think he ticked those boxes. So in in, in all in everything, he kinda of ticked all the boxes in one in one fight. Um, so I'm really happy with him. And also, you know Cunningham was a very good fighter. He's a southpaw, a big, long, awkward southpaw. Um, so I thought he handled it really, really well. It's very hard to look good against a long, awkward southpaw. 
So especially one that's a two-time Commonwealth champion that's got loads of experience doing 12 rounds before. So I, I thought he did fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of him. Um, and I, now I think we're going to see him really come into his own as a fighter. It was a very good performance from Jordan. And keeping with your stable, Tony Bailey, you don't have a press conference the other week. Yeah. How's Tony ticking over? How's yeah, good, good. Um, once it gets to 10 weeks, you know, it's coming really soon, you know, um, we're in we're in the hard hard phase of camp now, um, and he's, he's belly, he, he rises to the challenge every single day, and he knows what's at stake, and yeah, we're, What we're is there. Tony like in camp? He looks like someone who, when he's in camp, he's the most focused person yeah. you'll ever meet. Yeah, he is, yeah, 100% focused, he's focused and driven, that's what he is. And obviously there's talk, well not talk, sorry, there's been previously with David Kansi in the last fight because of his injury, he injured himself in the, in the actual first fight. Yeah. If there was another injury, touch wood there isn't, um, what would Tony look to do then? Would he still look to get a fight on May with FIFA? Or? Oh, wait, uh, listen, Hayes going to fight. Yeah, he's, he's not, he's not bulked up, he's not, he's not, you know, I believe David gets a lot of his injuries because he was the excess weight he was carrying, the bulk and everything like that. Tenons aren't strong enough to cope with all that. He's sleeper, he's a more athletic version. He's, he's training now, he's more smart. As we get older, we need to adapt. I mean, you know, as, as, a, as somebody that's just looking after the body themselves, as you get older, you you understand that you can't do things that you were doing when you were in your 20s. And so you have to adapt your training. If you don't adapt your training, you, you get injuries. That's just normal normal man on the street that's keeping fit and get, keeping yourself healthy. So you adapt your training and then you don't get those injuries. But yet you're still in great shape and you still and you still feel as fit and as fresh as what you did when you were younger. And uh, that's that's what I believe Hayes done. He's adapted his training to, to cater for the fact that, yes, he is aging. You can't do certain things that you do, so you just change. I've done it with Bellew. We've, we've, you know, we've changed. We don't train the same as now as what we uh, we did two years ago. You have to adapt when fighters start getting old. Same as when you know when I had Ryan Rhodes. As as fighters get older, to prolong the career, you have to change things. Do you think Bernard Hopkins at, 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 at 50 trains the same way as what he did when well, when he was in his 20s? Yeah, you know I mean, so so yeah, it 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 um, it it's, uh, it has to adapt. David is all right. Cheers, mate. Nice to meet you. Cheers.